So Charlie, if you can tell us a bit about how you facilitate um, helping other people come along to do stuff for you on the team. So it kind of starts from setup day really, getting here uh, early Thursday, helping get the awning up um, so that the team have got somewhere to work. Um, obviously I take the bike away in between the rounds and I try clean it and bits like that so lads don't have to work on a dirty bike because no one wants to work on a dirty bike. Um, and then me being a rider and qualifying enables people to work on a bike so like the aim for me is to make sure I'm on the grid at each round because yeah. if we're not on the grid then there's no point in people working on bikes so I make sure I try my best to make sure we get on the grid it's been quite difficult this year with like the uh, super sport grid because it's so oversubscribed yeah. but the main aim is getting the bike on the grid so that people have got things to do and the, yeah. working on a bike is I've done it myself working on people's bikes it's a really hard thing to do because you've got to be so thorough with yourself because you know that you're sending someone out on that yeah. on that bike and, and, and the last thing you want is, is something to go wrong um, the chain's not right and it, it comes off and yeah. I, mean, the, I mean if this year season I think there's been a few chains out there that's broken obviously not on our bikes because uh, they were well yeah. looked after yeah so getting people to work on them is a real challenge and they've got to be and that's the whole point in the team is it's a challenge for everyone and it gives that uh, military environment as well that they might not have in their in their civvy life now as well yeah. so that that's the challenge for the for the people working on bikes and they they can see the reward of me getting out there and if we have a good race everyone's smiling if we don't have a good race it's, it's one of them and we'll well, we'll go out again <laughs> tomorrow well if you don't have a good race you just get the mickey taken obviously probably yeah <laughs> probably yeah but ma main aim is get on the grid and yeah. uh try not fall off because they don't yeah. want to work too hard <laughs> and, and that enables other people to come along and be part of the team Yes, um, and, yeah. and this team's unlike any other where everybody is a volunteer yeah. where the other teams in the paddock they all get paid for and all the rest of it so yeah. I mean this this is crucial so, yeah and we're probably the only team in the paddock where the rider isn't the main focus the main focus yeah. is the team yeah. so you can get two three people working on a bike each, each weekend um, and keeping them busy doing that that is that's the aim of the team. It's yeah. I'm not the sole purpose of the team. I'm just there to get on it and yeah. do what they've done. Yeah, and unlike other riders uh, across the, the the grid, I mean, you muck in and and do a lot of the work that others aren't able to do because they're they're broken or something like that. That are here to help anyway. So, I mean, your your role is multi multitasked. It is a bit with with setup day and takedown. Like I try to do as much as I can. Um, if people can't do certain things, I'll I'll do those jobs. Yeah. Um, and just just as work as a team, basically, to get to get the job done. Terrific. Thank you very much. That's right. Good luck for next season. Yeah. <laughs> See how it goes. Well, good luck for tomorrow, actually. Yeah, yeah. Got a race tomorrow. Yeah, it'd be nice for the weather to yeah. be uh, consistent. Not get get the weather gods out tonight. Dry yeah, the track, dry nice the and track. warm. Yeah, <laughs> or just completely rain. We'll have one yeah, or the yeah. other. Not, yeah, not in between. A nice like wet it. one. The, the, you're good in the wet, obviously. I don't mind the wet. Just one or the other's nice. Yeah. A bit of consistency. Yeah. But like today was a bit hit and miss, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Me and me and Dave both made the probably the wrong call, but we could have been heroes, or we just yeah. ended up bringing it home and pulling well, in early. At least, at least you kept it upright. Yeah. That's yeah. key. Yeah, we both had a few moments. Uh, <laughs> that, that means some, the, the, the rest of the team can enjoy the evening. They yeah. haven't got to work through the night to get the bike ready. I think Jules would have would have had strong words with me if I crashed on <laughs> dry tyres when it was pouring with rain. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much, Charlie. No, that's all right. Pleasure.
the warm up continues. This is Charlie getting ready. So you're all ready for the first qualifying session then? Yeah, see how it goes. Yeah. Hopefully make the grid. <laughs> all, all warmed up? Yeah, I've uh, just had our PT, so yeah. good to go. Brilliant. Good luck. Cheers, thank you. So I finally managed to catch up with Charlie. So Charlie's one of the riders. Uh, Charlie, if you can tell us a little bit about how you got into True Heroes Racing and how you come to ride one of the bikes. So when I was in the military, I was riding for the Royal Navy motorsport team. Uh, I rode there for four seasons and I was going to hang my leathers up and then uh, through connections, I uh, started chatting with Phil and Lazette and then an opportuni opportunity come up to ride in the Tri Options Cup on a Ducati V2. And uh, obviously I jumped at the opportunity to get involved with the team. We don't like to sort of turn these things down when they come up. No, you can't. <laughs> no, it's an uh, opportunity of a lifetime for someone like me. Brilliant. Yeah. So how have you been getting on? And this is your third season? Yeah, third season now. So I did a season in Tri Options and then that finished and the team was kind of forced to go into uh, Super Sport because we had the bikes already. It was just a case of making modifications to it to get it to run in that class. Yeah. Um, so that took me a little while to get used to it because I come from riding a CB500 and then jumping on from 50 horsepower to 155 horsepower was a bit of a jump. <laughs> um, so it took a little while to get used to it. Uh, but with the help of people in the team and using the knowledge that people have got, I think that we've made quite a good bit of progress in the last couple of years, especially last year. That was yeah. every time I went out on the track, I was getting a PB. So it was, yeah. it was really rewarding. And now you're finding um, riding with um, stats, riding with, I mean, well, the data the, and that. The data and all the rest of it. Is yeah. that helping? It definitely helps because if I come in and say something, uh, the data either backs it up or tells everyone that I'm lying. So, um, like working with Andy and Jules quite a bit on that, we'll sit down and go through it and just I'll write down what I think I've felt, and then yeah. Jules and Andy would be like, "Nah, that's not happening. This is the complete opposite." So, it's always it's always a bit of a leveler to yourself to yeah. see what's actually happening. So I've noticed um, before you before you go out, you're getting ready, and you've got Jim along. Uh, today or yeah. this weekend to take you through uh, a warm-up uh, how is that helping yeah so we've not had this is the first meeting Jim's come to um, since I've been in the team uh, just through connections um, and it just I feel has made a difference just made you a little bit sharper I find when I go out on the bike I like try to get myself in the zone but I end up almost falling asleep <laughs> uh, and so it's like just a bit of a livener to wake you up a little bit, warm your body up, get the heart rate going before you jump on the bike and the adrenaline starts pumping. Yeah, I noticed uh, the drop in the ball lives up your, your reactions as well. Yeah, definitely, and it it opens up your vision. Like, you can get sucked into, like, a tunnel vision, but when you're, you're working with them quick reactions, it opens up your vision just to see things in the corner of your eye. Because if you've got a wide vision when you're riding, it slows everything down, and then, yeah. then you can ride quicker. Yeah. And that's the aim is to, to, to get quicker and quicker. And uh, are you looking forward to next season on a new bike? Yeah, whatever that will be. Yeah, we're well, not too we sure. St we still don't know yet. We do don't we? know yet, but whatever it'll be, it'll be a good challenge for the team. Like, we, the team's had the Ducatis for the last 10 years or so. So uh, it'll be a challenge for the mechanics having to learn something completely new. Like, it'll be a challenge for, for me because trying to set up a bike can take potentially half a year to get used to yeah. like working with Andy working with Jules um, so we'll see how see how that goes brilliant well thank you very much for your time that's all right it's a pleasure